Now, let us discuss the thermodynamics of the superconducting transition. The transition between the normal and superconducting states is thermodynamically reversible. We treat type 1 superconductor with a complete Meissner effect. That means, the magnetic field equals 0 inside the superconductor. And in the magnetic method, the stabilization free energy is found from the value of the applied magnetic field that will destroy the superconducting state at a constant temperature. Now, let us consider the work done on a superconductor which is brought reversibly at constant temperature from a position at infinity to a position r in the field of a permanent magnet. If we have a field of a permanent magnet like this, we bring a superconducting material from infinity to here at constant temperature. This is our superconducting material. Then the work done on this superconductor can be written as W equals minus integration 0 to B A, where B A is the applied magnetic field, external field M dot D B A because the applied field is changing infinitesimally when we bring it from infinity to our place of interest which has a position vector r. Now, this much work done is per unit volume of the specimen. This work appears in the energy of the magnetic field. The thermodynamic identity of the process, the free energy dF in uh, differential free energy can be written as minus m dot dBA. If we write it this way, for a superconductor, then we can, uh, we also know that m over b a, now we write in CGS unit, which can be written as minus 1 over 4 pi So, we can write for a superconducting state d f s, s for superconductor is 1 over 4 pi b a d b a in C G S units. The increase in the free energy density for superconductors as we bring into a magnetic field can be given as F s for magnetic field equals B a minus F s for magnetic field equals 0. That is B a squared over 8 pi. This is the amount of change in the free energy as we bring the specimen into the influence of external magnetic field from infinity. Now, consider a normal non-magnetic metal. If we neglect the small susceptibility of a metal in the normal state, then magnetization is 0 and the energy of the normal metal is independent of magnetic field. So, uh, at the critical field, 
critical field we call it B A C critical applied field F n for normal metal function of B A C equals F n 0 this is the normal metallic state. Now, these results are all we need to determine the stabilization energy of superconducting state at absolute 0. At the critical value B A C of the applied magnetic field, the energies are equal in the normal and superconducting states. Because if we are cooling the material through the superconducting state at uh, through the uh, sorry it is not cooling, if we are uh, reducing the magnetic field through high to low magnetic field, then we reach that critical field where the free energy is equal. So, we can write as F n B A C equals F S B A C equals F S 0 plus B A C squared over 8 pi as we have obtained earlier here in this equation. Now, this is in CGS units. The specimen is stable in either state when the applied field is equal to the critical field. It could be normal metal, it could be a superconductor. With the help of previous equation, we can now write delta F equals F n 0 minus F s 0 equals B a c squared over 8 pi. This much is the energy difference in C g s units for no applied field. Where that means, delta F is the stabilization energy density for the superconducting state. And this result is in excellent agreement with experiments. Now, we discuss something called London equation. This is an important equation in the context of superconductivity. We saw that the Meissner effect implies a magnetic susceptibility chi becoming minus 1 over 4 pi in CGS units. In SI units, it is minus 1 and this is the characteristic of a Meissner effect. perfect diamagnetic state. Electric conduction in the normal state of a metal is described by Ohm's law. Ohm's law is J equals sigma times the external electric field, which we have written earlier in a different form in the form of uh, resistivity. Now, here sigma is the conductivity. We need to modify this equation drastically to describe conduction and the Meissner effect in a superconducting state. So, we describe conduction as well as Meissner effect, not only conduction. How do we do that? We make a postulate. We postulate that in the superconducting state, the current density is directly proportional to the vector potential a vector, this is the notation for the vector potential of the local magnetic field and uh, this vector potential is related with the magnetic field as magnetic field is the curl of the vector potential. Because uh, the divergence of a magnetic field is always 0, it can be expressed in terms of a vector potential. 
and as we have discussed as we have learnt earlier in electromagnetism that a vector potential can have some gauge as long as this expression gives us the correct magnetic field we are satisfied with it. The gauge of this vector potential will be specified now. In CGS units we write the constant of proportionality between J the current density and A the vector potential as minus C over 4 pi lambda L square. Now why this kind of a form we will come to that later that makes the current density j equals minus c over 4 pi lambda l squared times the vector potential in CGS units of course. This equation is called the London equation. Now if we take curl on both sides, we get curl of the current density equals minus C over 4 pi lambda L squared times the magnetic field because curl of A gives us B in CGS units. The London equation is understood to be written with the vector potential in the London gauge. London gauge means that applies certain condition on the vector potential. The first condition is divergence of the vector potential must be 0. And the second condition is the normal component of the vector potential is 0 on any external surface through which no external current is fed. n signifies this subscript n signifies the normal component. So, these two conditions make it a London gauge. So, if we have this kind of a gauge we will have the divergence of j going to 0 and j n the normal component of the current this also goes to 0 and this gives us the actual boundary condition. Because vector potential is not a measurable quantity rather current is a measurable quantity therefore the expression in terms of the current that gives us the actual practical boundary conditions. First we verify that the London equation leads to Meissner effect. We have obtained this equation, let us verify it. Now let us write down a Maxwell's equation which is also known as Ampere's law in this form in CGS units curl of the magnetic field equals 4 pi over C times the current density J. And this is under static condition where there is no displacement current. This is only the Ampere's law without Maxwell's correction that means there is no uh, displacement current in here. 
Now we take the curl on both sides of this equation that will lead us to curl of curl of b which is nothing but minus del square of b equals 4 pi over c curl of j. This is what we obtain in again CGS units. Now this may be combined with London equation to, uh, for a given superconductor. For a superconductor this gives us del square B equals B over lambda L squared if we club this with London equation written here. This equation is seen to account for Meissner effect because it does not allow a solution uniform in space. So that a uniform magnetic field cannot exist in a superconductor. If we now consider the magnetic field as a function of R which equals B naught which is a constant. This is not a solution to the above equation. Unless the trivial situation that is B naught equals 0. Of course, that kind of a solution would exist, but that is not of any interest. Further, the Maxwell's equation that is the Ampere's law ensures that the current goes to 0 when the magnetic field is 0. In the pure superconducting state only field is allowed externally damped as we go in the external go in from the external surface. Let us consider a semi infinite superconductor occupy the space. The right part of it is a superconductor the shaded region is a superconductor here. And if we apply a magnetic field here like this uniformly, then it would be decay, decayed sharply as we enter the superconductor and go to 0 soon. This is the applied magnetic field and this is the magnetic field inside the superconductor. So, this can be expressed mathematically as B x x is increasing as we move right in here equals B naught times exponential of minus x over lambda L. In this example the magnetic field is assumed parallel to the boundary. Thus we see lambda L measures the depth of penetration of the magnetic field. This is known as London penetration depth. Actual penetration depths are uh, not described precisely by this lambda L alone. Uh, for the London equation is known to be somewhat oversimplified.